Hey guys, this is Gaijin Hunter. As you know, I cover Monster Hunter as all my main content, but I am very interested in Sekiro Shadow Dies Twice, and they did have a very interesting article in Famitsu today, and I wanted to give you a full translation because I know a lot of people, like myself, are starved for information, we're really excited about this new game. So if Sekiro is your theme, please stick around and enjoy the video. If not, look forward to my next Monster Hunter video tomorrow. So I'm not going to translate all of these uh, first few pages because this is really just recapping all the information we've already seen at E3. Um, so this is giving us the key visuals, telling us that it's a brand new game from From Software, director Miyazaki-san, who of course is the famed director of the Dark Souls series, um, and that it's set in an inspired world by the end of the Warring States period in ancient Japan. Looking at the next page, we see on the upper left here that this is a story um, that actually starts out really fast. We actually see it in the trailer of this child emperor being kidnapped by the Ashino clan. Um, and then you are a ninja who is sort of in servitude of this young emperor. So you go to defend him, you end up losing, you lose your arm, you get killed, uh, and you're scooped up by this guy at a temple who gives you a prosthetic arm and brings you back to life, or I don't know how you get back to life, it's kind of a mystery. Uh, and that's the start of our adventure. And here they're just showing some screenshots of all the cool different ninja tools that you can use with that prosthetic arm. Uh, up here we can see that he's using sort of a firecracker type of thing to cause the enemy to sort of, you know, jump backwards. Um, we've got uh, Shuriken, a mention of that, and a whole bunch of variety. You got a picture here of the grappling hook, which you can use. The game has tons of verticality, um, lots of exploration, and sort of battle variety by using that grappling hook. And of course, good old stealth kills as a ninja. Some very nice screenshots here. Here we have some stealth kill uh, screenshots of the ninja coming down out of nowhere to kill an enemy because remember, these guys are samurai. They're stronger than you. They're bigger and buff. You are a ninja, so you, it's up to you to use your environment and your tools. Here we have a screenshot showing off the stealth. We can sort of, you know, listen to enemies, get information that helps you form uh, strategies to take people down. Uh, over here on the right, we can see that, you know, there's situations where it's not just going to be one-on-one, -on -one, uh, so it's going to be very tense, uh, especially because we know these games are well known for being able to die very easily. Now in here, we have a sort of example of the awesome map design, very reminiscent of Dark Souls, lots of verticality, winding roads, and exploration for the player to do. And finally, we have just a nice screenshot here that really sets the mood, which is this fantastical reimagining of a time period in Japan. Um, without having to be, you know, historically accurate, it's just inspired by, which I, I'm really happy about. Okay, now I'm going to give you my fan translation of the entire interview. I figured it's better than me trying to sort of digest it into my own words, and I thought you guys would appreciate all the different details that are here. Now keep in mind, this is my own fan translation, it's not official, um, but I hope it does give you some more insight. Now, in order to avoid myself constantly saying, they asked this, and then he said this, I'm going to be talking in the voice for Miyazaki-san, and I'm going to use a filter on my voice when I'm talking and answering the interview questions. That way you can just sit back and listen, and it's going to be very easy to go through. Okay, let's jump in. So you finally announced Sekido Shadows Die Twice, a brand new game from From Software. Please take us through the process that brought you here. Well, we started planning for this game after we finished the DLC for Bloodborne, sometime at the end of 2015. We were still developing Dark Souls 3 at the time, but we were already thinking about making something new after that game was done. Considering we've done Otogi, Ninja Blade, and even published Tenchu, I think it was very natural that we were drawn to the idea of a Japanese aesthetic as the keyword for the game. Not only me, but especially the young staff who have not created a Japanese Steam game, I think we were all really excited at the idea of this new challenge and decided it's what we wanted to do. Ah, so the Japanese action was the starting point then? Well, yeah, we wanted Japanese action, but in particular ninja was a keyword that we started with for game design. As with other people, one of the initial things that was creatively stimulating for the team was Tenchu. At the early stages, we did actually have the choice of making a Tenchu series game, but half that series was made by other developers, and each one of them have left their fingerprint on the series. So we felt that if we did a Tenchu game, it would be hard for us not to be mimicking these elements, so we decided that why do we take some of the elements of the series that influenced us, like rope and ninja stealth kills, um, we would take that and construct something that was totally new. Were you personally interested in doing Japanese ninja action? Absolutely. I'll go more into it later, but there's parts of this game that I personally like and feel that work perfect for a ninja character. Stuff like rich vertical maps, intense battles, and using a wide range of methods to overcome a difficult situation. 
Activision being announced as a co-developer was really big news. How did that come to be? The way it's set up is that we're in charge of the development as well as the publishing in Japan and other Asian territories, and Activision is handling publishing elsewhere around the world. One of the big reasons we chose to go co-dev is that we work with Activision to get a lot of good feedback from them in various areas of the game's development. I never really heard of From Software doing co-dev on anything before. That's right. However, I want to make sure that no one misunderstands. The core development and all final decisions, as always, is with From Software. Activision understands and respects what we make and what we're trying to achieve. And then they'll give us helpful advice like, oh, well, if you want to do that, how about doing something like this? They play the game and they give us direct feedback. I've always been clear that everything beyond the point where you press the start button on the title screen is our territory, and this is no exception. But our relationship with them is really a cooperative one. I didn't think that Activision would actually be involved at all in the creative side. Well, it's really tough to define what is considered, you know, the creative of a game. But they really contribute a lot of help in making sure that the game is easy to play, uh, especially with helping the player during the onboarding stage. Adam, note, this is where at the bottom they refer to onboarding being that, you know, part of the game that's the tutorial process of easing players into how to play. It's a little embarrassing, but we're not really strong with that part of the game, so it's super helpful to be getting advice from them. You're acting as director in this title, is that correct? That's right. There's a ton of staff I depend on in the team, and while there's areas I entrust to them, I'm still overseeing the game as a whole, the level design, artwork, and world building just like I always do. It's really no different from how I work on the Dark Souls series games. A lot of our ideas are born through everybody talking and sharing with each other. It sounds like a great setup for the team. Now, I might be changing the subject a little bit here, but in the teaser trailer when you revealed the game, you used Shadows Die Twice as a phrase. Can you explain how that fits in with the game? The subtitle was actually a catchphrase that I came up with for the trailer, but the publisher liked it so much, uh, it eventually became the subtitle of the game. The phrase captures the game really well, I think. The Shadows, of course, refers to the aspect of the ninja, and Die Twice is both a system mechanic in the game, as well as the overall theme of coming back to life. It also has the hidden message to the fans that, yes, you are going to die a lot in this game. I see that the name is written in kanji as well. Yeah, it refers to the one-armed wolf. It's kind of like a nickname for our main character. He's a wolf-like man with one arm. Since the theme was to have a Japanese aesthetic, I thought it would be nice if the game title was written in kanji, and I liked the multiple meaning of the kanji seki, so we decided to use that. Activision also liked the name for the West, even though it's a Japanese word, which actually kind of surprised me. So tell me, what is the setting of this game? The setting is inspired um, by the end of the Warring States period in Japan. Just like our past games though, the setting of the game is not that well defined, but the idea is that this is somewhere off at the edges of the country in some highly elevated cold place. When thinking about the periods in which the ninja were active, there's really two that stick out. There's the end of the Warring States period, and then there's the Edo period. We chose the former as the image of it has kind of, you know, wars being fought, it's bloody and crude. Plus, the Warring States is closer to that of medieval times, where Edo is kind of more modern. The Warring States period, despite having that old and mystical feeling to it, is still very much alive and usable. One reason in particular that this time period is a good choice is that it really captures that desolate feeling of things dying out. Um, and that is one important part of the Japanese beauty that we wanted to depict. So is this going to be From Software's take on the end of the Warring States period? You can say that. It needs to have a realistic quality to it, but it doesn't need to be real, so to say. Just like how the world of Dark Souls was our take on medieval fantasy, this is our approach and interpretation this time as well. It's going to be our reimagining of it, and at times even a little bit out there. One thing that sticks out as unique in this game is that you have a set main protagonist. For this game, we intended to use a set protagonist, and it's a first for me at least, but I think it also helps the title stick out as something new. The thematic quality of the story is kind of difficult to do if you don't have a set protagonist, so I think it'll be enjoyable. However, I will say this so that there's no misconceptions, but this is not some heavy story-driven game at all. Yes, we have a main character and there is a story he goes through, but outside of that, this is really no different than our past games. Are you writing this story's plot? Yes, I created the base plot and I work with another member of our team to adjust it as needed. Of course I oversee and review everything, but the majority of the text this time is written by another person on the team. This is actually the first time I've directed a title and didn't write all the text for it. 
I think my style of writing is quite particular, so this is another area where I think it will help the game feel fresh. Can you tell us the story behind the main character? At the moment, there's only so much I can say without giving spoilers, but our protagonist is a shrewd ninja. He's a lone wolf that doesn't belong to any particular fraction. He's cool and doesn't let his emotions show. He's in the service of a young child lord who is kidnapped. He gets his arm cut off, killed, and loses everything. However, he is found by a one-handed monk, is brought back to life, and in his place of his missing arm is given a shinobi prosthetic arm. This is where the story starts from. His goal from this point is to bring back the child, and to exact revenge on the man who cut off his arm, and sort of that whole mystery of rebirth. So yeah, the game starts with the story of taking back and getting revenge. The Child Emperor, that's a young kid, right? That's right, he's a child. He's a character in the story, but he's also a real solitary presence. It's kind of the tale of what will happen between this forlorn master and its servant, something like that. He's the type of character I really haven't written about before, so I personally like him. Well, it seems like he might be popular as a character then. Honestly, I don't know. Um, at From Software, we have a few characters in the past where we'd show their face and that's part of their personality of the character, but that whole type of thing is kind of new for me, so I'm still trying to find my way with it. There's a lot of things with this character and the protagonist that I recall struggling with, but these are all areas that I think normal people in development find quite normal and not challenging. <laughs> Okay, moving on to action. It came off to me that this is the classic type of action that you have in your games, but with a lot of verticality and even a different tempo than that you had in Bloodborne. There are three design aspects to the action in this game. First is the grappling hook, which is a special feature of this game and allows you to enjoy moving around and exploring multi-layered maps that have verticality. It also allows the battles to become more dynamic by expanding the types of strategies you can use. The second aspect is the sword fighting. The attack and parry style of the two stores clashing is very Japanese, and the tactic of throwing off the center of your foe and then killing him in one single stealth kill is definitely a part of that. The core of the battle is that being one step away from death, fights that come down to the wire and finding that momentary opening. It's very ninja-like. Finally, the third aspect is to cleverly kill your foe. We really focus on making sure that there's a wide range of ways to overcome the challenges in the game and offer the player many different avenues. There are many cases of special types of enemies or situations in which one approach may be more effective than another. Sure, you can attempt to take them straight on, but we feel that it's more ninja-like to use your tools and power and environment to cleverly take down your enemies. The grappling hook action and ninja-like swordplay all play a crucial role in this. Using the grappling hook to move around the multi-layered environment and move dynamically, and using the sword to cut away your enemy's defense to create that opening really helped to contribute to that idea of having a wide range of tactics available to overcome your challenges. This kill clever approach seems to be a key phrase for this title. It's a major theme for the game, and it's a means for us to give the players a feeling of satisfaction for conquering something that is very hard. To be frank, even if you're bad at action parts, the game does give you other ways to deal with things. So, of course you could just try going head on, but the difficulty of doing that is probably going to be harder than anything we've ever done before. Um, there's always different tactics uh, and things that you can do, so I don't know, maybe that would be a more intense way to play? <laughs> I see, so the player can enjoy taking on different approaches. Yes, and that is baked into the level design as well. In this game, when you travel and encounter an enemy, it's not like an instant battle starts. You'll be watching them from above, and we've balanced it so that there's this natural period of time for you to think about how you wish to challenge them. You mentioned before about the game having a different tempo than past games, well I think this is one point that really causes that change in tempo. So is it safe to assume that the fun of finding strategies is what gives this game depth? Yes, and it's tied to how the exploration is interesting as well. For some of the enemies in the game, you can sneak and listen in on them before you have a chance to face them, and you can use that info that you got to your advantage. Finding effective strategies is definitely fun. So for the variation in fighting like a ninja, does that come from the katana and the ninja items? The base of the battle is the katana, the prosthetic arm tools, and the grappling hook. The prosthetic arm acts as a support weapon to the sword play and also helps add variety in the ways that you can fight, giving you things that you can do like throw a shuriken, firecrackers, an axe, and more. We have a good variety planned. For example, you can use the cracker to startle animals and you can use that to great effect. We also have some over-the-top tools planned for the arm as well and we hope you can look forward to us announcing those. So the tools are equipped to the prosthetic arm? 
That's right, you can actually select several of them and equip them, and then select the ones you want to do on the fly as you play. Is there any RPG-like character growth system? Yes, the game is an action-adventure game, so it's not really quite the same as you have in an RPG, but we do have a character growth element for the protagonist. We hope you look forward to more details at a later time. So for the grappling hook, which is really quite a topic right now, does that give the battles more speed? Well, more than giving it speed, I'd say it's more like it makes it more dynamic. You can use it to move around dynamically, um, both for just moving or when in battle, and this leads to some really fresh gameplay. The hook has great usage against large bosses, and we think you'll get to experience boss battles like you've never had in a game before. I can imagine the hook is really good for expanding on the exploration aspect as well in the game. In your games in particular though, the player will discover strategic routes as they explore all by themselves. How will that work in this game? Will this be an open world that you can move around in? The map composition is close to that of the first Dark Souls game. It's a dense map with a lot of dimensions, and with just a few exceptions, the maps are all connected and seamless, and there's a lot of freedom in how you can advance through the game. The hook allows you to move vertically a lot, and that will make exploration more fun to do. For the maps, what kind of situations can we expect? There's not a lot I can say at this point, but these situations are distinctively Japanese in taste and take full advantage of our style of map design. I think we have a lot of variation of colorful situations you can look forward to. Yeah, there is that large mythical snake. Is there any other enemies in this game that are not of this world? There are. Um, outside of, you know, people like fallen warriors, samurai generals, and bandits, we also have enemies that are not human. Uh, a lot of them are peculiar and impressionable, a lot to look forward to. I heard there's no online in this game? That's correct. There are several reasons we chose to do this, but getting away from the restrictions that come with having a multiplayer feature allows us to really focus on the single player experience and make something really unique and fine-tuned. It's stuff like having this set protagonist that allows us to bring out a tightly crafted game and ensure that players get the game experience that we want them to have. You mentioned before about Rebirth being a part of the Shadows Die Twice phrase. Can you elaborate on that system? The system consumes a type of resource, but when you die, you're able to come back to life where you fell. In a ninja game, you need the tension, so we do need death in the game. Um, but on the flip side, if you have to die and just keep redoing things over and over again, that can really ruin the tempo of the game. In order to solve this issue, we came up with this new mechanic. We want players to be really nervous to die, but we want there to be enough sufficient time to play before you get a game over and have to redo things. The idea of coming back to life is a mystery that will be involved in the story, and it can actually be used as a strategic tool in the game, which is actually quite unique. Like, after you die, the enemies will turn their back and start to walk away, then you can you know, come back to life and stealth kill them while they aren't looking. So dying is part of the strategy. Not sure if I can call that new or maybe even cruel? Currently you only get one insurance death when you play, but we're really trying to figure out the balance right now on what happens after that, like can you use resources to do it more or whatever. We're going to be very careful that the fact that you can come back from death does not make dying in this game any less severe or tense of a situation by making sure that the times you can do it is appropriate. The intention of this feature is not to make the game easier or to lessen the shock of a death, but to keep that tension and improve the tempo of the game at the same time, so we're really keeping that in mind as we balance the restrictions and the death penalties that the game will have. It is really far too early for us to say, heck, we might even take the fact that you can regen into consideration and make the penalty for the real death even more severe, you never know. <laughs> it sounds like you have a lot of things in place to help you balance the difficulty. Looking back at your past games, how does this compare in terms of difficulty? I'm aiming for the game to offer a challenge even harder than what we have in the past, but I'm not asking players to necessarily do skillful action to overcome it, but to use their heads and the tools and resources to do it. We want players who are looking for a really tough game to be satisfied, but we also want as many players as possible to experience the feeling of joy and satisfaction when you overcome a really difficult challenge, so we're fine-tuning it so both, both can be achieved. I can say that at least the game won't be difficult just for the sake of being difficult, and it definitely won't be easy either. It sounds like we can all trust you and be relieved of any worry. The release date is set for early 2019, so is development going smoothly? Well, uh, well, I suppose you can say so. I hope you look forward to more news in the future and the release of the game. And that's that. I apologize, some of my English was really stilted, uh, a little weird. This is kind of, you know, it wasn't necessarily a speed translation, but I mean, the issue just came out today. But I wanted to get the news to you guys. Hopefully this will give you, you know, some insight into some of the interview that they had. Hopefully they'll actually, 
you know, get interviews like this out in the West. Um, I thought it was very interesting. Um, I like hearing some of the insight of how the team is working with Activision. Um, the fact that Miyazaki-san is in full creative control here, um, that they're trying new stuff, and I'm pretty excited about the action that he's talking about because it just sounds like a really clever and fun and difficult game. Anyways, let me know down in comments if you have any questions, what you guys think about the interview, what you're excited for for this game, and hopefully we'll get a, you know, a gameplay video where they show off some of the boss battles and some of the stuff they were talking about uh, sometime soon. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this. Hit that like button if you did. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, happy dying.